What up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. And we are getting ready to talk about money. So if that's what you like, stick around. Check out this short video filled with gold nuggets. And if you haven't already, help out the channel with a like and a subscribe. In this video, guys, I'm going straight off the cuff. And I want to talk about the state of the current real estate market because I'm seeing so many lies floating around out there. I want to clear some stuff up for you. Uh, there are changes in the market that still have not happened yet. The real estate market is in decline right now in most areas okay your area might be one of the ones where it's still ascending but in most areas prices are declining a couple things i want to point out there's more inventory out there than you know about banks have something called shadow inventory which is basically units that are in pre-foreclosure or in the foreclosure process that they have not put on the market because they don't want to flood the market with distressed properties causing a quote unquote crash all right Another thing is nobody really knows where the bottom of any correction or crash is. You find out where the bottom is when the prices start to reverse. I want to point that out too. Fix and flip right now is dead in most markets. If you're going in as a real estate investor, I'm going to make two recommendations to you. One, make sure your credit stays tight because as interest rates, whatever they start improving, and lending products improve, you want to be in a position to qualify. Number two, go in with a buy and hold mentality. And if you're going to do fix and flip, do not go into the situation thinking that there's no way at all that you'll be a landlord. Because if you can't sell that property, you're going to probably end up being a landlord. So if you have to end up being a landlord for a property that you thought you were going to be able to sell, here's another hot tip for you. Take pictures. I mean, like, 150 pictures of the interior and exterior of that property before tenant moves in. Because if you if the market changes and now you're able to sell it and you got a tenant in there, it's gonna be hard to get a good photo representation of your property with someone living in it. I don't care how neat and clean they are. They are. It's always gonna look better if you take the fresh photos before someone occupies it. And hey, get somebody experienced that knows about market shifts. This ain't no diss on you brokers that got in the business in the last two, three years, but take it from somebody that's been in this for 14 years. They don't know yet. They don't know anything about shifting markets. They haven't been through it. If you haven't been through it, you haven't experienced, how are you gonna know what it's like? I've seen the Great Recession. I've seen slow appreciation. I've seen extremely quick rips going upward like what we went through during the pandemic and now this shift downward higher interest rates and fyi three percent was never normal three percent three and a half none of that stuff was normal a really good interest rate is anywhere between five and six is a pretty doggone good interest rate and y'all probably not gonna see three percent again when rates start to subside they'll probably bottom out somewhere around five maybe four and three quarter would be considered golden okay so hey i just had to come off the cuff because i'm seeing so many lies floating around out here from people that just either don't know how cyclical a business that real estate is which means it goes up it goes down it goes in cycles and telling you not to try to time the market when your broker tells you not to try to time the market your response should be okay so are you buying right now that should be your response because you should be trying to time the market you should be trying to buy when there's the most room for you to have appreciation on the sale side because you're not going to hold the property for your entire life. You want to buy it where you actually have some equity and where you have some equity that's building. So there's room for growth. So when you sell it, you can leave with a big bag of money. Investment properties have three main criteria points that they should meet for you. I'm going to point it out and then I'm going to get out of here. First one is tax benefits. Just about any real estate property is going to give you some tax write-offs, aka benefits. Number two, if it's a buy and hold property, it should be monthly cash flow in your account. Uh, last, you want a big bag of money when you sell it. So if you buy it at the top of the market, where's your room for appreciation? All right, study on that. There's your homework. Make sure you subscribe, like, share this video, pop the notification bell if you want to get real information 
unfiltered and not just a bunch of fluff. Uh, you know, YouTube thinks that you should watch this video right here. But until next time, I'm 100% gone.